What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and today I'm back with another one of my brand new Overwatch hero concepts, this time for the airborne mecha pilot, Overlord. With deployable support drones and aerial tactics at his fingertips, Overlord is the most mechanically unique hero I've designed to date, and offers what can only be described as a fundamentally new way to play the game. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now as many of you know, I've actually done an Overlord hero concept before, it was way back when Boo Busan first released and wasn't super well thought out or balanced, which is why I've decided to reconceptualize Overlord with a vastly improved kit. This time I've made him a secondary healer support who has a defensive ultimate and excels at supporting multiple allies all across the map. Additionally, given his mech's design and the evident StarCraft reference in both his name and character, I've decided to make Overlord's playstyle somewhat reflect the real-time strategy game genre while still fitting within in the scope of being an Overwatch hero. And to explain how that works, let's delve into his kit. Overlord is a support hero with 200 health and 100 armor, which gives him the same total 300 HP as Bastion. While this may seem like a lot of health for a support, it is heavily offset by the physical design of his mech. Overlord's mech, Mastermind, is roughly the same size as D.Va's. This means he'll be very easy to hit, and with only half the health of D.Va, this can prove very problematic. On top of that, like D.Va, his headshot area is the mech's cockpit, which is huge on him and covers most of the top of his mech. With size and crit hitbox considered, that 300 HP starts to sound like it's not actually enough for him to survive. And on its own, it definitely isn't, which is where we transition now into the first of his abilities. Overlord's passive ability is Flight. Much like Farah, Overlord is right at home in the air, but unlike her, he never actually has to touch the ground. Overlord is perfect permanently airborne, which works just like Mercy during Valkyrie. The same movement controls apply when it comes to ascending, descending, and moving in any of the horizontal directions, and likewise, he suffers from crowd control in the same way as Mercy too. Getting stunned or slept will cause him to sink out of the air, he can be earth shattered if close enough to the ground, hooked by Roadhog, and knocked backwards by boops and rocket punches. Additionally, Sombra's hack will disable his activated abilities, but not affect flight. Flight also gives Overlord a permanent move speed of 7 meters per second. For reference, this makes him faster than normal hero movement speed, including Tracer, Genji, and Lucio's speed boost, but still slower than Mercy's Valkyrie speed and Wrecking Ball's ball form. This faster movement and flight ability helps him to offset his large body and head hitbox. By remaining airborne, it'll be much harder for enemies to hit him, as he can position himself outside the range of many weapons. Additionally, by positioning himself above everyone else, he can further protect his head hitbox from line of sight. He can still easily be countered by snipers though, especially if they can get high enough to hit his large cockpit. For example, a single fully charged Widowmaker headshot will take him down to only 3 health due to his armor, so this further necessitates the need for Overlord players to be aware of their surroundings. He does have an additional movement ability, which I'll discuss a little later, but first let's get into his weaponry. Overlord's primary fire is the Gatling Laser. In a lot of ways, it's somewhat like a tone down version of Bastion's sentry gun, but there are some other key differences. For one thing, rather than having ammo, the weapon runs on an overheat and cooldown mechanic. This is something I've used in other hero concepts before, but the unique twist for Overlord is that on top of the resource meter based firing mechanic, the weapon also has a wind up time after the player holds down the primary fire button, but before the gun actually starts to shoot. The best comparison for this would be the Heavy's minigun from TF2. This prevents the player from being able to instantly start start dealing damage, but rather forces them to play a bit more predictively. Looking at the stats, Gatling Laser deals 2-4 damage over a 20-40 to 40 meter falloff range at 25 rounds per second, thus giving them a damage output of 50-100 to 100 DPS. The effectiveness of this is reduced however by the constant 2 degree spread angle, which greatly reduces its accuracy, especially at longer range. The weapon has a wind up time of 0.5 seconds after holding the firing button before it begins to shoot, and overheats at a rate of 20% per second. This means the Gatling laser can be fired up to 5 seconds consecutively before needing to cool down. The gun cools at twice the rate it overheats, being 40% per second, and begins to cool immediately after it stops firing. Additionally, the gun only overheats while actively firing, and not during the 0.5 second wind-up period. My goal with designing Overlord's primary fire was first and foremost to make something that fits the weapon we see on his mech, but also to give him something unique and functional 
really interesting without making it too strong. Most of the time, you'll probably be spamming gunfire down at the ground, likely focusing on barriers and tanks due to the widespread of your shots. However, it can also be used to effectively combat an enemy Farah who's contesting your airspace, or to defend yourself when trapped at low altitudes. Moving on now to his first activated ability, this is where we get into the meat and main mechanics of his kit, and that's drones. Overlord can deploy two types of drones which follow and support his teammates. One heals, and the other deals damage. I'll start by explaining the characteristics which are shared between both drone types, and then break down what's unique about each individually. To start, activating the drone ability brings up a choice in exactly the same way as Moira's orbs. Pressing the primary fire button deploys a healing drone, and pressing alternate fire deploys a damage drone. Overlord can have up to four drones active at a time, and there's no limit to how many he can have of each type. That means he can deploy all four as healing drones, or two as healing and two as damage, three as damage and one as healing, etc. The only restriction is that each ally can only have one drone following them at any given time. Once deployed, each drone acts much the same as the Zenyatta orb. It flies to whichever ally was being targeted at the time of its deployment, and then hovers above their head while providing its support effect. The main difference, though, is that the drones can take damage. Each drone has 75 health and will break if it loses all its HP. They're roughly the same size as Symmetra's turrets, so they are a bit challenging to hit directly, but can pretty easily be taken out with any kind of AoE damage. The Overlord player, as well as the player whom the drone is following, can view the health of the active drone via a small health bar on screen. One thing that makes them further unique from both Sim and Zen's abilities, though, is that the drones can be recalled back to Overlord. By pressing the Interact button while looking at an ally with a drone, that drone will then fly back to Overlord and returned was Drone Dock. The Drone Dock is where the drones sit when undeployed, and are incapable of taking damage while there. Think of this in the same way as Symmetra's turrets when they're ready to be deployed. Docked drones aren't of the healing or damage type, but rather take on whichever type Overlord assigns it upon deployment. Whenever he deploys one of his drones, it leaves the dock and follows whichever ally he was targeting at the time of activation. However, unlike Symmetra, that Drone Dock slot does not replenish with a new drone when the drone is active. Active. It will remain empty until the drone is either recalled or destroyed. If recalled, the drone returns to that dock spot. Once in the spot, there's a 0.5 second delay before the drone then begins to repair itself at a rate of 35 health per second. Overlord can redeploy that drone again at any time, however, it will only be deployed with however much health it had time to recover while in the dock. If there are multiple drones in the dock at the time of deployment, whichever drone has the most health will be deployed first. The Overlord player can view the docked drones and their health on the bottom of the HUD. If the drone is destroyed before Overlord recalls it, the dock then initiates a 6 second cooldown to replace the lost drone. Overlord can still deploy and recall the remaining drones while the lost one is being rebuilt, but the dock can only rebuild one drone at a time. Therefore, if all four drones are destroyed, it will take 24 seconds to fully replace them all. The purpose of this mechanic is to make it strategically advantageous for Overlord to recall drones drones instead of letting them die. This adds to the micromanaging aspect of his hero kit, as he needs to keep constant tabs on all his active drones to see which ones should be recalled to either repair themselves, be redeployed onto a different hero, or redeployed as a different type. Drones can only be deployed and recalled when the given ally is within range and line of sight, meaning that Overlord's positioning is critical. Unlike Zenyatta, the drones will remain active on allies even if they leave Overlord's line of sight. Also, if an ally dies, dies but the drone is still active, it will attempt to automatically return to Overlord. If Overlord is not within range or line of sight, it will instead automatically break as if destroyed by the enemy. Furthermore, if Overlord dies, all active drones immediately break, but will return to his dock when he respawns. However, being resurrected will not return all broken drones in the same way. Alright, now that I've covered the general drone mechanics, let's look at each of the two specific types. First up is the healing drone. This one is easy because because it functions identically to Zen's Harmony Orb in terms of how it heals. It is 20 healing per second per drone, meaning that with all four drones set to healing, he can output a total of 80 HPS divided across four allies. This may sound strong when compared to other secondary healers, but keep in mind that the drones themselves can be destroyed. Since Overlord has no healing potential outside of these drones in his ultimate, which I'll get to a little later, it can be easy to shut down all of his healing
ceiling if the Overlord player isn't careful about when and how they deploy his drones. Plus, for each healing drone he has active, that's one less damage drone he can have out at that time. And speaking of which, the damage drones behave very much like Symmetra's turrets, only that it sticks to a specific teammate instead of the map. The damage drone fires in a 5 round hitscan burst at the nearest enemy it sees, but will switch targets to focus on whomever the hero it's following deals damage to, just like with Torbjorn and his turret. Each damage drone deals 30 DPS with a range of 25 meters. Again, this on its own isn't very much damage, but with all four drones set to damage, they can deal a collective output of 120 DPS. One other way Overlord can use his drones, which I haven't touched on yet, is self-healing. By pressing the alternate fire button, Overlord will assign one healing drone from his dock onto himself. Doing so works in the exact same way as if it was healing one of his allies, meaning that the drone can be damaged and destroyed, and won't be available to deploy onto a teammate unless he first recalls it by pressing alt fire again to toggle it back into his dock. But now that I've explained the drones, let's get onto his far simpler second ability, Evade. This is the mobility mechanic I mentioned earlier. Evade allows Overlord to quickly dart in any direction to either dodge incoming gunfire or body slam enemies. The simplest way of describing this ability is as an omnidirectional version of Hanzo's Lunge. While that ability allows Hanzo to move in any horizontal direction, Evade can move Overlord up, down, sideways, backwards, whichever direction he happens to be moving at the time of activating it. The primary purpose of this ability is to dodge incoming damage. Let's say you see a Widow lining up a shot at you. You can evade behind a nearby building for cover, or just move yourself in a way that might cause her to miss her shot. Evade can additionally be used as just a slight speed boost if you're trying to get back from spawn, or to body slam people in the same way as D.Va's boosters. It does very little damage in this regard, but has a bit of knockback, which makes the ability more fun to use whenever in an unfavorable close range situation. And now, onto his ultimate. Being designed as a secondary healer, I wanted to give Overlord a defensive ultimate along the same lines as Lucio and Zenyatta. So in order to keep with his drone theme, I gave him Drone Matrix. When Overlord activates Drone Matrix, all active drones immediately break, and all players within 30 meters, including himself, are given a Matrix drone. Matrix drones are indestructible, fly to their targets 50% faster, and each heal for 160 HPS. This also allows the player to have up to six active drones instead of only four. During Drone Matrix, Overlord is incapable of deploying or recalling any drones, and if an ally dies, their Matrix drone will automatically break. After six seconds, all remaining drones break, and Overlord's drone dock is immediately filled with four full health drones, which he can then deploy again. When compared to Zenyatta's similar ultimate, we can see that for Drone Matrix, I traded the immensely high healing and self-applied invincibility for a larger area of effect and the ability to still use Overlord's non-drone abilities. This should help to make the two ultimates feel different and each have their own pros and cons, while still effectively serving as a reliable defense ultimate. Overall, Overlord is an incredibly unique hero, which made him particularly fun and challenging to design. The different drone types are designed to make him flexible, as he can maximize healing when need be, but also provide decent DPS output, with any mix of the two being possible as well. Much like in an RTS, playing Overlord involves constant micromanaging in a high game sense. It's certainly not something that will appeal to every player, but my goal was to create a very different style of support hero, which rewards different skill sets while still fitting within the scope of Overwatch's FPS genre. I'll also say that, due to how different of a hero he is, any and all of the numbers I came up with for damage, healing, and abilities are highly subject to change if he were to ever actually be added as a playable hero. I spent a lot of time trying to balance his kit to fit the game's current state, but it's impossible to get wholly accurate numbers without having some kind of proper in-game prototype to test with, so for now, these were the best I could come up with. If any of you have questions, which I suspect you will, then please leave those in the comments below. And otherwise, feel free to check out some of my previous hero concept videos on characters like Demon, Sanjay, and the Junker Queen. I'll have the full playlist of concepts I've done linked in the description and cards on screen, so be sure to check them out. And with that, thank you so much for watching. It takes me a long time to put together these hero concept videos, so if you enjoyed it, then be sure to leave a like and share it with your friends. Plus, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit up the bell to never miss any of my future Overwatch videos and hero concepts. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.